just a quick recap of sentiment. We have a, um, a, a, bit of a, a bit of a mixed meeting yesterday at OMC. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail because we just reviewed that extensively. But basically, it seems like the um, consensus outcome uh, is what um, is what we got with a little extra fear maybe from the dubs because of the uh, Fed reiterating that the cuts are not coming anytime soon. <clears throat> so again, the uh, PPI USO weakness was faded and we're back kind of above that support level on the Dixie, look at my Dixie charts for that. And, um, and it's just a matter of seeing if anything, uh, if the market was really waiting for the ECB uh, to do anything or not, or the or, or, or if the ECB is completely independent at this point. Um, so my bias sentiment wise remains slightly risk on, which allows me to, you know, buy dips on equities because equities is the only risk asset that seems to be depressed post uh, FOMC again, as a result uh, potentially of those um, cuts being priced out. And um, yeah, but the, uh, the Japanese yen is highly pressured uh, the antipodeans have been relatively strong and uh, the US dollar is off the highs from the day. So again, pressured uh, slightly into the New York session. Yep. So I would still probably continue with my risk on stance across the board, short to midterm, no changes there. Um, but if we get these little dips, fantastic, because it allows me to get back in on some of the ones that we already took gains on and uh, looked excessively high to buy yeah, or excessively low to sell. And, and getting these little divergences once in a while allows for price action to take a breather, give us those retracements and pullbacks closer to the mean and, uh, and, and able to get back in if our, if our bias remains the way that, uh, that, it, that it has been up to now. From a portfolio perspective going into the trade hunt, there really isn't anything extra that I wanna do uh, because I have We've had the pullbacks on SPX. We were able to get in yesterday, get some gains and get back in again on, on pullbacks. Uh, I've got my oil long that, uh, that I always want to be in as long as prices are this low. Uh, I, ha I have an, a DAX in the money from a short. The hedge that I took is there. It's not, it's not performing at the moment, but because I'm okay with risk on, I'm going to leave it on and I will probably take a second hedge a little bit lower. As a matter of fact, I have a bid for it. Uh, once that short exits for gains and that bid is at 16.123 on the DAX for another equity long um, ahead of, uh, well, probably won't reach their pre-ECB, but, you know, going into, towards the end of the week. Um, I've got a euro in the money, uh, 40 pips. Actually, it's dropped a bit now, more like 30 pips. I will leave it on again. That is also positioned in case we get any hawkishness and continued, you know, um, uh, I guess continued push towards more hikes without being very clear from Lagarde. The question with the Euro and the ECB at the moment is, is the, uh, is the market gonna react the, towards the Euro in the same way that it reacted towards the US dollar uh, during the initial phases of the turning point, right? Over the last few months, you know, transition from super aggressive hiking to more talks about pauses, terminal and, and turning things around. Um, so if that's the case, it doesn't matter how many times Lagarde says that there are more hikes to come, right? If there is talk of being close to terminal and close to pause and, and, uh, and things like that, the Euro might be pressured as a result, but again, it depends, you know, against what, against the U S dollar that is also being pressured, you know, it's going to, it's going to neutralize itself. So I'm curious to see what the market reaction is to, to Lagarde, if there are going to be any surprises today in terms of what she says, or is it, if it's going to be a repeat of the last meeting, which basically is, you know, we're close, but there's still work to be done. Inflation is unacceptably high. We're still working hard towards, you know, the, uh, the reduction in the, in, in, of this inflation number into our accepted band. And, uh, and if that means that we need to uh, hike a little bit more, we will hike a little bit more. And uh, we are going to be looking at data as it comes in. So if that's the speech, then, you know, I think that's the expected speech. I wouldn't expect too much crazy volatility happening in the Euro. But if the uh, speech turns into, uh, we're starting to see the transmission of monetary policy have an effect on the real economy. And we're seeing, uh, you know, these uh, downside moves on in, uh, in, in broadside demand, uh, you know, and, uh, and we think that we just need 
to get into a data dependency mode where you know the meetings like the fed said yesterday are live and things can change uh, depending on incoming data and we don't want to commit to anything right any sign of that hawkishness disappearing you know would could probably pressure the euro so i'm very going to be very curious to watch those are the two possible uh outcomes the first one is the more consensus scenario the second one is the more dovish scenario uh where there is a turning point in view finally right and the more outlandish scenario would be having uh an extremely hawkish lagarde that says well there's you know we're we're probably going to be tailing the fed in terms of our terminal right and heading up to the to the five and above and you know and that will obviously uh get the euro uh uh, boiling a bit and, and, and will probably support it. But I don't think that that is a viable scenario at the moment, seeing that, you know, we're not getting stellar, you know, macro out of the Eurozone either, right? And, um, and the war still uh, weighs on, on, on everything and it's still a, a contributor to, to, to inflationary pressures, uh, you know, so it depends on, you know, I'm curious to see if anything is changing on the economic projection side of things. Uh, from the ECB as well, like, do they see, uh, you know, from what I understood, there was no sign of recession, but now potentially there, you know, some of the macro doesn't bode as well. So it's uh, there are going to be a lot of pieces to put together, um, but it's going to be answered really quickly because Lagarde goes straight to the point. She talks about the path and then she talks about the economic expectations. So she doesn't beat around the bush with that kind of stuff and we'll get it in the first 10 minutes of the press conference during her recap anyway. But uh, all eyes, well, my, my, both my eyes are going to be focused on the reaction of the market to the language that is used. Yeah, I'm not here to guess. I don't need to position any trades into uh, my guesses either. I just know what the consensus outcome is. And, um, and I'm positioned to make sure that, you know, I have some positions that will gain if that consensus outcome, you know, creates the, uh, the correct uh, price movement. So from a top-down perspective, uh, the um, just know that you're probably it's probably going to be better to position yourself, I would imagine. And I don't know; it's very hard to tell if the market is going to react the same way as it did with the Fed and start pressuring the euro. So this one is a little bit iffier than with the FOMC because with the FOMC, we know that any dovishness is going to be jumped on like a like a you know like a band of rabbit a hyenas, right? And, and sell the dollar off on on extreme on on, on extremely clear dovishness. But with the ECB, hard to tell because we haven't seen that initial reaction yet. And I, you know, and I'm making a potential comparison into something that could happen, but that has not yet happened. So I don't know how the market is going to react. And maybe this meeting here gives us the the, the, yeah, the baseline for what the expectations are going to be going forward. And maybe we can start thinking about the euro like we do about the dollar. But I have my doubts about that because again, the euro is in a much different situation. Um, there are a lot of other external factors that affect the, uh, the ECB's decision that the Fed doesn't have to deal with or vice versa. So again, it's its own entity and things could, could change. But I'm going to stick with my, you know, we are in a greed environment. Nothing is threatening significantly. Yes, we have a little bit of a technical recession uh, being um, assumed in New Zealand at the moment. Uh, but nothing else seems to be going you know, we have maybe a little bit uh, here and there on, on, on German data, but nothing is really heading into global recession territory, which is what would trigger, right? Those signs would trigger a change in uh, market outlook from, a, from a, you know, from optimism into pessimism. And uh, since those signs are not really there yet or are not there yet in the magnitude that they should be in order to warrant <clears throat> a market flip like that, I'm going to stick with risk on for the most part. And because we're getting some assets not behaving risk on, uh, you know, I'm going to call those dips that we can buy <laughs> or, you know, rips that we can sell. So any questions, anybody on that little preamble? Again, just want to make sure everybody's on the same page and understands what I'm saying. And if you don't, no shame, just mention, say something and we'll go over um, items as needed. Yeah. But my philosophy remains the same. I do not trade news events, right? I'm not a trader that says, I think X is going to happen. So I'm going to uh, trade specifically uh, because I think X is going to happen. What I do is I think in terms of, I think X may happen. And the consensus is that X may happen. 
So I want to make sure that I don't go too much against X. That's, that's my philosophy. <laughs> and if I can put a, a few things in favor of X, fantastic. I'll do that as well, especially if they benefit me in other areas as well. I can get, you know, multi, multiple efficiencies from, from, from single positions. But, you know, I'm not really trading the news per se because I'm more a student of market reaction than I am of market forecasting. So for me, it makes more sense to know where the market wants to go, to know what the ECB might do, and then make sure, you know, that I don't get into any, any mess, you know, by not trading properly, knowing those two variables, you know, or understanding those two variables.